Hello everybody, here we are again. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about overheating. Um, if you look at my older videos, so let's say from a year ago, you will find that I did about 30 hours of uh, overheating testing on the A6300. Um, we tried many things, recorded about 30 or 40 hours. Um, found out that it is a, a complex problem where uh, it always, for me at least, on my unit, uh, made the 20 minutes that uh, Sony claimed in 4K, but it's most of the time without doing any tricks or changes, stopped at 40 minutes or gave the warning at let's say 28 and stopped at 35. Uh, most of the time it didn't make it to uh, 45 minutes. So one full run and a little bit. Again, over spec, but uh, it clearly um, set the internet on fire because how can Sony do this, etc., etc. So um, since you want to compare uh, apples to apples, I did the same thing uh, in the last few hours with the A6500. The same situation, the same setup, which I will explain a little bit. This won't be a complete test and there are some, let's say, interesting results. Um, but at least it's an apples to apples comparison between my A6300 and my 6500. It doesn't tell you anything about the variations between the different units, which clearly there was in the A6300. And if we see the online, um, let's say, five different cameras on in the sun on hot rock sort of comparisons, uh, we also see that there is clear um, unit to unit differences there. So uh, this is an indication, one data point of what is happening and to make the video a little bit less boring uh, compared to most of my videos or like most of my old videos, I did decide to put in uh, at least a video stream. So I can show you some things on the camera which I think uh, uh, have had an effect on the results that I'm having. So let's not uh, keep uh, you in suspense and tell you what the results were. So what I did was 4K in a room, 22 degrees Celsius, no wind, so no cooling from that. External battery dummy plug. As a side note, the dummy plug on the A6300 uh, versus uh, an internal battery actually gave worse results, I will explain later, and not better. Um, I put it in airplane mode and let me think, I left the IBIS on and I left um, autofocus on. So uh, I started the test um, and the first 29 minutes no warning, no nothing. So the claim that Sony is making, it will do 29 minutes valid at least on my unit at 22 degrees Celsius. Um, then, uh, really enough, uh, and, or surprising, or a little bit upsetting, around the same point that the A6300 uh, started giving a warning, I got the overheating warning. Um, as a side note, of course, I put it in this higher level warning, let it go uh, mode, since Sony themselves say it doesn't affect your warranty, and um, I don't see why you would ever turn it off. Uh, so we got the overheat warning at 40 minutes. Uh, that never stopped me before, so I left it running and it went fine until the end of the run. So that was run number two. Run number three, same thing. Uh, by then um, the warning had been on for a long, long, long time, but the camera felt and, and uh, much cooler as the A6300 was. Um, I will point out at which spots later. Let's first go to the end of this game. After three uh, battery changes, or sorry, after three uh, full 29 runs, the battery, um, uh, sorry, the card was full, the battery was external, so no problem. Uh, the card was full, I had to format it, it took about 
I don't know, 30, 40 second, seconds. By then the warning was off when I started it up again and um, we continued. Um, after my guess three or four minutes the warning came on again and uh, we were back uh, to the regular recording under warning uh, mode. So I did this for another one and a half hours, so in total three hours, six runs, 29 minute runs with probably 40 seconds for the camera in between the formatting of the disc to cool down. So. Um, yeah, if you ask me, under these conditions with these two units, the warning uh, for me came at the same point. Maybe they didn't on pur did it on purpose. The idea is that it's a warning to warn that your camera is getting hot and you have to be careful or something. I don't know. I find it kind of useless that it, um, I wouldn't say useless, kind of the, um, Worrying that it, it, it started already after 40 minutes, while in reality it was able to record for three hours and I'm guessing for many, many more. Um, so what does it tell us? It tells us the camera internally or whatever sensor hit first. Um, uh, I mean with sensor, the, the heat sensor that gave the warning. Um, that it was clearly above the warning level but clearly also far or below the shutdown level. Um, so yeah, to me it seems um, almost a fact that something has changed, right? So um, it could be that it's just just under the limit of uh, the overheating, but I, I don't think so. I will explain when um, I'm showing you the areas that got hot. Um, I think fundamentally something has changed and um, this will give, I think everybody within the variations of unit to unit, a uh, better experience. Now I still think if I go outside, put it in the hot sun, uh, it will overheat. But let's be realistic, realistic. if you take a black box uh, of about the same size and the same um, uh, weight and you put it on the in, in the hot sun, it will probably also get hot. And it has no way, because it has no active cooling, to dissipate this heat, right? So be realistic. Uh, my guess if you want to do recording outside for more than let's say an hour or more than even 20 minutes and you leave it uh, uh, flat into the sun when it's hot, not on a tripod, um, you're kind of um, not doing yourself a favor. Put something on top of it, it's not really that difficult to figure out the solution for this if we really need it. If it's your daily job, don't use this camera to begin with for this kind of work, right? So all the normal things that people uh, yell on forums uh, be, uh, for or against the issue. So uh, now I'm holding the camera, let me point out a few things that I uh, noticed. On the, um, even the A6000s, which also, unlike what other people think, overheated at a, in, in HD, not 4K because it didn't for, do 4K, um, but especially on the A6300, uh, the areas that heated up for me under the same conditions were clearly different. So let me show you why. So basically the A6000 for me got quite hot over here. So if you touch the corner you could clearly feel that while it was running for 30 or 40 minutes it got hotter and hotter. The same behind the display, mostly in this area uh, if I remember correctly. Um, I kind of remember correctly because that's why I made the the the, the fan solution. So if you look at my older older videos, I also made a fan which solved the problem quite well because it was pushing air like this, resolved the issue completely for me. Um, so um, th this whole part for me now only became even after three hours, I would say warm. And with warm I mean, um, yeah, warm. Not hot, not cold, but warm. The part that got hotter, and um, I think I know why, was actually this part. So I would say the part under the buttons. Um, and also a bit the grip started uh, warming up. So um, what 
I think they did. Of course, they had to add a lot of uh, extra weight because of the IBIS. And um, I think they moved stuff around in that direction. So some of the stuff is over here that was maybe uh, before in a different location because they had to put this quite big sensor moving thing there. They also, um, in my opinion, changed the grip. Now, let me hope that they have another camera here. Yeah, forgot to prepare this. So here we have the A6000, right? Now, um, they say they changed the grip, of course, to make it better to handle. Uh, but I also think that they did it to create a little bit more area for the heat to dissipate or even since the IBIS had to come in to move some of the components and, and at least change the thermal behavior of the whole thing. Because look at the battery here. First, there's quite a bit of distance, if you open it up, um, over here, right? So it's, it seems to me that they moved the battery up a little bit uh, if you compare it to the other design. But clearly there's also uh, yeah, less room over here, right? So, because if you look at this one and you open it up, you kind of see that the battery um, sort of moved a little bit, right? And um, there's now more area, hold on, there's now more area below, right? So this area has changed and that area has changed. And if we take the battery out, um, here we go. They also uh, changed the way that you need to open up. So this button has changed, which I kind of don't like because it's not as easy to flip it open when it's on a tripod. Guess I will get used to it. They also changed the, um, hold on, let me turn this to the camera. They also changed the, the, the point where you flip it open. And I think they changed a bit that it's easier to get the flash card out, but that's not important for this. I do think they changed the plate over here. So that side and that side, I think there's, uh, um, I would bet there's air there, but there is now more um, area for the heat to, to go, I guess, right? So to create a little bit of uh, 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 yeah, change in thermal b behavior. I'm, I'm guessing that it's uh, together with some of the optimization that they did in the LSI, so the, the CPU doesn't have to work as hard anymore because the LSI is taking over some of the, um, um, let's say, tougher software encoding problems or some other things is now done by the, uh, the LSI chip. So um, I'm guessing that also has effect together with the extra weight, uh, which result in more metal, which result in more uh, easier heat uh, uh, dissipation. Um, these things combined, um, I think resulted in, uh, uh, let's try to put a number on it, maybe a 20%, 30% better heat dissipation uh, compared to the A6300. Now, that doesn't mean that it will only last 30% uh, percent better or longer. Um, what it does is that it basically changed the, the, the point where the warning and the cutoff uh, happens. Now, at the same time, as we know, they also uh, allowed a higher temperature. Although, again, I did not feel it. I never felt this become anywhere close to the temperature that, that I had the A6300. Now, it was not in full sun because of course it will heat up, but uh, let's say its own heat generation in the same environment, in the same room, was clearly, clearly way lower. So I'm guessing the 30% um, better heat control dissipation, without, whatever you want to call it, has resulted that it quite clearly stays under that limit in my room in these conditions forever. Because if it gives a warning after 40 minutes, but stays stable for to the touch, but also in result for the next three hours, you can kind of guess that it found its, uh, its balance and nothing will change. The, after three hours, there's not more components still heating up or something. So um, yeah, this is, I guess, uh, all I can say. 
Um, I guess to the people complaining about to Sony about you can't make a camera that, that um, does this, right? I think um, there's a limit to anything, right? I'm very happy that Sony didn't make the camera bigger. I uh, applaud for what they did, the change that they made, the IBIS that they entered, the LSI chip. Um, and yes, I expected the overheating not to be 100% solved, or at least that we have to, let's say, build trust again, where the, um, uh, the limits are, how far you can push this. Now, um, the, the weird thing is that uh, in all these comparisons, comparisons, they are not really doing an apple to apples comparison, right? So we have seen a quite well done, or at least I found it very useful, comparison by some of the vloggers uh, between five cameras on a hot rock in the sun. Um, I think it was uh, very useful for a first um, view on things and we saw two things which we already expected. There's variations between cameras which we already know from the A6300 and there's variations between the 6500 and they seem to last a lot longer. What we didn't see and I hope some of these uh, um, um, uh, reviewers might do because they are the only one who have access to so many cameras is compare different cameras so I would have seen like to seen on the same rock uh, maybe an X uh, an um, XT2 or uh, one of the smaller Panasonic's that does 4k and put them next to each other no grip no whatever well, although no grip is a little bit tricky because clearly um, Fuji, Fuji already decided that 10 minutes will be the limit and I'm guessing it's because of heat because once you put a grip on uh, the, the external batteries will be deployed uh, first um, I don't think that's by accident, right? But it would be fun to see different brands next to each other of the same size and the same, uh, let's say, general um, um, uh, performance level uh, and see how they compare. But it would also be fun just to see how much heat the cameras are generating compared to the environment is to indeed put a black uh, um, metal box there and see what the temperature does on that because well uh, heat has to come somewhere if you put uh, a black object into the sun um, on a hot on the uh, hot underground um, yeah it will get hot right um, what can what what do you expect so um, sorry for the rambling but uh, since I had to wait for about three and a half hours to give you these results, I think it's fair that I'm allowed to talk uh, for at least uh, 15 minutes. Um, hopefully others will also do this test. I'm pretty sure there will be people who say I did it wrong and it's stupid and it's not a real comparison. Um, I, maybe it's all true because these are not the multiple units and we know that there's variations. This is not an extreme environment. Uh, but we, it is a an environment that is apples to apples to the previous uh, unit. So uh, in that way it's way more fair than just a random sort of thing. Um, so it is a data point, right? I think if five, six, seven, eight other people test it in different circumstances, we will get a feeling about how much better this camera is and where the limits are, how far you can push it. So um, yeah, this is my uh, addition to, uh, uh, to this effort to give uh, people an idea how far they can push the new Sony camera uh, in 4K uh, mode. So thank you for listening and um, if you made it all the way to this uh, end, I hope um, um, you have something nice to add in the comments or even critical, but not like that my video quality sucks because I'm not going to improve it. This is about the best uh, you will get, right? For me, this is just doing it for fun um, and there's no commercial or other reasons. These are all my own cameras and I actually never record three hours of video. Um, I think uh, between the A6000, the A6300 and the A6500, I probably did about 50 hours of overheat testing, which is kind of silly since um, 
I almost never push this camera so far. I did it in fact today on the 8600, mostly to see it as a burning test, right? Is the unit stable? Does it do anything weird? And having it in full operation, pushing itself for a few hours, I think it's good uh, that I find that in the first few days, instead after weeks that it has some weird problems. So slowly during these videos, I'm testing different parts. Um, just to make sure that the unit is not, um, um, let's say, um, of lesser quality, which uh, is always a risk if you buy one from the first batch, right? It's a combination between extra quality uh, uh, control because it's the first batch and extra uh, risk because small production mistakes have not been catched yet, which will normally might be uh, rolled in automatically on uh, uh, subsequent uh, uh, batches. So this is it. Um, thank you for listening and see you in the next video because more are coming.